Hey guys, it's Phoenix Automotive here again. In this video, we're going to be looking at the 2009 to 2012 Dodge Ram unit. So when you purchase your unit, it will come with all these bezel pieces, the screen, this area right here. There's a reset button right there that you can press with a paper clip and a built-in microphone. Uh, it has these silver sides at the side. Uh, it, we do, it does provide you these trim pieces. If you have a 12 volt power outlet here, you have to take the factory one and put it right here. And of course, you put your factory vents here. And if you have something here as well, you'd have to put the factory one here. If you don't have the 12 volt vent, we also provide a cover that you can put right here. Uh, and if you want to change the color of these, these uh, two side pieces can be removed. There's like four screws at the back that you need to unscrew and then you can paint these or customize it however you want. So this is the unit itself. Again, it comes with everything with the screen and inside the box, you're going to be getting a couple things. This is the USB connection. It's a yellow connector. Again, match the groove, match the um, cut on the side of the corner and plug it to the back of the unit. So in this case for this unit, we have a couple black plugs right here and based on the groove and based on the cut on the connector, we're going to plug that in right here. So that's where that one goes. I'm not going to push it in all the way just because I'm going to show you guys the other connections. Now there's uh, labels on this. So the one is labeled OTG. If you purchase the built-in CarPlay option, you would be using this USB port plugging in your iPhone or Android phone. Works with both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The other USB port we route to, we actually route both USB ports to the glove compartment or anywhere you wish where you want access to them. You also get two extra adapters here. This one adapter plugs into here and this little mini USB goes into the factory car to retain one of the factory USB ports so that our unit can read it. And uh, we don't suggest putting it on the OTG one just so you have access to it for the built-in car play. Uh, both USB ports can be used for updates and also for transferring files or whatever you wish. You get an extension USB cord. You can also use your own extension USB cord if you want to uh, make these longer and route them somewhere else in the car. So those are those three. You get a fact. You get a GPS antenna. It's a blue connector, and this blue connector uh, plugs up right here. So just put that there. And what you need to check when you plug in this antenna is if we go to settings at the top, you can scroll left and right. We go to settings. On the left side is a GPS monitor. Check if you have three satellites here on the earth and at least one green bar. That's how you know this antenna is working. If you get one green bar minimum, that means the location where you have the GPS antenna is good. The next thing you're going to get is a harness for the factory backup camera. So find a connection that fits this. And this male RCA, we're going to be connecting that to the back of the unit. There's a female right here. You have other RCAs, RCA-R, RCA-L. And on this white connector, you have RCA-L and RCA-R. These are your four channel speakers if you want to hook up an aftermarket sound system. So you got to have these two plugged in if you want four speakers. Otherwise, you just have two and two here. Looking at the blue connector, you have two yellow RCAs. They're uh, video output one and two. Now these video output one and two are gonna be using the one, it's not an output of the unit's video, but it's an output of whatever you put inside this white connector that's labeled aux V. So you can put a video source coming in here, whatever is coming through aux V will output onto these two video output RCAs. The other thing you have are two yellow other RCAs. So let's move to the white one. On the white one, you we've gone through aux V. You can put a video source in to output to those two RCAs. You also have two other RCAs here called CVBS out. Now these are extra RCAs for fact aftermarket backup camera. So you can put them in here and you have two RCAs for aftermarket backup camera. We've gone through the RCA RL. So those are for the two speakers and you have aux R and aux L. Uh, these are inputs, so if you put these in, they will have sound coming through the AUX app. So if we go to the apps on the AUX, this is where you're gonna get the sound. So you're gonna put video through here, you're gonna put sound through aux R and aux L, and you can see that video feed here as well as hear the sound when this app is open. Uh, you also have another orange wire, it's called reversing power supply, but don't use this one, use the purple one, and uh, that's it. With these two blue and white connectors, again, you have two grooves at the bottom, one groove at the left on this one, and you gotta find the connection on the back of the unit. 
again, match the shape of the connector to the correct one. So this one would go right here and the white one would go right here. There you go. And let's show you where the USB one goes right here. So that's how the connection should look on the 2009 to 2012 Dodge Ram. So those are the harnesses you get. The last harness we did not talk about was the main harness. And you can see right now we're using a test bench. So it kind of looks like this. But the test, the actual harness you're going to be getting is looks like this. So this one would connect right up top here. And looking at these connections, we have one going in here, which is your radio. So you're going to plug this in. And then you have this little box connector right here. You need to find a factory antenna to plug into this. Now on your car, it's going to be either yellow or purple, but try one or the other to see which one gets you your uh, radio signal. And what you can do is you can go on the unit and go to radio and just see if you have a signal. So if you press seek, see if it finds a channel. So that's the radio connection. The other connections you're going to have is um, pretty straightforward. You have this connector right here. Now this connection is going to be coming from the factory car. So in your car, you're gonna have a connection that looks like this. And it's gonna likely come from the bottom row of buttons. You know where, the, where your factory AC knobs are? Below that, there's a bunch of buttons there. That's probably where this connector will go. So disconnect that from the car and connect it to here. You also have the main connector you gotta find. Straightforward, find a connection matching this. And the last but not least is this canvas decoder box. Now this decoder box has a one on each end. We're not gonna use the other end, you're only gonna use one end. So connect that, and this one is gonna be an empty end. This is for other vehicles, so don't fret if you don't have a connection for that. So find the factory connection here, connect the red box, connect this to the bottom row of buttons right below the AC controls. You can see here we have a open slot here where you're gonna take the factory knobs and port them over here and just make factory connections. Once you made these three connections, connect this main harness into the unit. Quick look at the unit. You can see at the top we have the buttons here. Now we provide you with these buttons. What you do have to do, however, is go on your factory vehicle and take apart your buttons and just remove the motherboard. Remove the motherboard and place them into here. You can see they're gonna clip in place. And once you move those buttons here, the next thing to do is move over the factory AC board. And the AC knobs are gonna go over here. We do provide a little trim piece around here just in case if you have a little gap. Uh, yours might be a bit too big. So you gotta put this trim piece here and then it should pop right in. Uh, Aside from all this stuff, you're also going to get this here, and this is pretty easy to put on. You see that there's two holes right here, match them up with the two holes here, like so. And we provide you clips, but we recommend using the factory clips, and you can see these holes need to match up, and there's screws that you need to screw in. Pretty straightforward. Once you've made the connections, see if the unit turns on, now that the unit is on. Before you check anything, the thing to make sure is go check your setting files. So at the top you have a bunch of apps. You can scroll left and right. Uh, with the new PX6, you can also move them around. But let's go to settings. Let's go to settings. And then on the left side, we're going to scroll down to install set. Once you're in install set, 666 888. And you have to make sure you're on car type Dodge Ram Low. So this is for 2009 to 2012 Dodge Ram. Another thing to make sure with the uh, factory backup camera, make sure you're on CVBS as the video source. So check that it's on CVBS. Go to the car type, press Dodge Ram Low. Once you press the Dodge Ram Low, it should come up with this pink screen. Make sure you're on Dodge. And then you can see you have a bunch of Dodge car types. We're gonna choose Dodge Ram Low again. Once you've done that, you're gonna make sure that the protocol is on simple. After you make sure the protocol is on simple, it should be already set to that. On the car info, you're gonna make sure it's on 2012. This is for 2009 all the way to 2012. Logo settings, just boot logos okay. We can check mark the box here. We can press okay. Press the back button on the bottom left corner. Then save and reboot. After you saved and reboot, it should come back up. 
when it does come back up and it loads, uh, what we recommend also doing if something doesn't work, take a paper clip or something and press the RST button. This is of course after it reboots and comes up. Press the RST button, that might do something in the hardware to uh, tell it to switch. So we've done a save and reboot. If you're still having trouble, say with the um, backup camera, uh, I would press the RST button. We're not gonna do this here because uh, just for the sake of time, but you would press the RST button with a paper clip. Uh, if you're having sound issues, check if your steering wheel control works, volume up and down, next track, back track. Uh, Next thing to check is to go into settings again, or not settings, sorry, we're gonna go into console. It's a guy sitting down at the top. For the sound settings, inside here you can see we have a bunch of settings that you can mess with, like tow haul, but uh, there is a button at the top of the unit for that. Uh, you can see original amplifier settings. Right now the volume is at zero, so even though we have 10 here, uh, you might not have sound. Make sure you can toggle the volume higher to a higher number. And the balance right and left, balance front and rear, if you're having only sound on the right side, again, play with these settings. So this is where you're gonna play with your amplifier settings, and that's about it. If you guys have any other questions, let us know. Uh, give us a call at 323-917-9038. This is for the Dodge Ram 2009 to 2012, and this is a 12.1 inch screen, PX6 unit. Let's make sure of that, PX6. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.